they recently discovered this thing called junk DNA. There are 98% of all the DNA in our body do nothing. Nothing, they say. Nothing? Or they don't, they don't know what it does. So they call it nothing. Yet, there's all this DNA that's been passed down from generation to generation that is in our bodies. We don't know what it is. When we look at the night sky and we look at a part of the planets and galaxies out there, we said, the telescope said, well, that's it, that's the limits. That's the galaxy, that's the Milky Way. Then we found stronger telescopes and we combined telescopes and we look further and we said, oh no, that's not it, there's something else out there. And they found that this was just one galaxy, the Milky Way, and a number of galaxies out there. Then they pointed to one part of the night sky using a very fancy satellite that was in orbit and said, hold on, there's other dimensions out there of things that we didn't know about. It's just so much bigger than we ever imagined. So then they looked further and they found all the things they could identify. That's a planet, that's a galaxy, that's a meteor, that's whatever. Yet there was something else that was moving all of these things. They said, there's nothing else but what we found. But why are those things moving when there's nothing else? Then they discovered this thing called a black hole. And this black hole somehow had nothing in it, yet it affected everything around it. We go back to our bodies, 98% of all this DNA sitting around, apparently doing nothing. What they're going to find and what they have found, some cutting-edge scientists, is that that 98% dictates the response of those 2% of the DNA. And it's what scientists who can't quantify things, because that's what they like to do, identify, stick a label on, put it into the vault and forget about it. But then they say, hold on, what's going on here? And then we looked at our bodies and we said, oh, the atom is the smallest definable size. There's nothing smaller than that. And then they looked again and they found more powerful microscopes and they said, oh, there's something in here. When they looked further, they found nothing. It's all this empty space. So inside the atom, it's 99% empty space. So what's all that empty space for? Just a waste, carryover, junk DNA, empty space, black hole dark matter they found then. They said, oh, this dark matter, that blackness that has nothing in it, not, it is something. It's very alive. In fact, it's influencing those things around it. So when scientists begin to stop having this hallucination that they know everything, they're going to find out that all this junk DNA is not junk. They're going to call it dark something else or empty something else, but it's not empty. Even if you look at your life and you say, oh, well, you know, that's the outcome. Oh, I can't, I'm so worried about what's going to happen tomorrow because this happened. How do you know with certainty that because this happened, that will happen? It's not the case. And you'll find most of the time it hasn't been the case. So even your worries, you have no idea. You don't know. We don't know. And I don't know. So what are we worried about? And why are we identifying and tell people what they should do? This is what we found. This is what you should do. That's what that is. And that's how you should handle it. No, it's not. Because that's not what it is. It's what you think it is. Until you dig deeper. When we decide to come to a rational decision and say, we've ruled out all the possible doubts. This is what it is. No, it's not. The process of deduction at its end process requires guessing. So you quantify on one hand these variables and on the other side you quantify those variables. Then you say, well, based on those variables, that's the correct decision. But have you quantified everything? Or have you limited 
to make a decision. So what you find is when scientists decide on something, they use subjective measurements, and they stop there, because if they keep on going, they'll never be able to reach a conclusion, because there is no definitive answer about anything. It's an illusion. So stop trying to control. Stop trying to tell people what they should do based on your evidence, because it's arrogance. One wise man told me, giving advice is arrogance, because you don't know how it applies to them. You're saying that's good, but who's to say? that that bad thing is going to make them much better and them avoiding it is going to make them much worse. You don't know. This is the whole point. We don't know. It doesn't mean that we become weaker. We become stronger because we let go. We allow life to take its course. We don't go pushing down the throats of people what we think they should do because we know better, we don't. 